First Chronicles chapter 29. I'm going to read verse number 10 and 11. Verse number 10 says, Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We certainly thank you for the good singing. Lord, we thank you that from the very first congregational song to the special we just heard, just um, made all the focus about you and your goodness and your greatness and your tender mercy and, Lord, your long-suffering. And Lord, I'm glad we couldn't outrun you. And you came to where we were. And God, I'm glad you made a way that one day we can go where you are. Now, Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you that we can come to the house of God this morning. Lord, I realize it's cold outside. And Lord, I realize the weathermen have made forecasts. Lord, I wish your people would have as much faith in you as they do the weatherman. God, I, I'm so thankful that we can come even on a cold, blustery morning and worship you in spirit and in truth. You deserve our adoration. Lord, you deserve our allegiance. You deserve our obedience. You deserve all homage and all praise and everything within us that we can muster up to offer anything to you. You are worthy of it all. And Father, we bless your holy name. Now, Father, I pray. I pray for Miss Sheila in the hospital. God, you touch her. I pray, Father, for Miss Sonny. You touch her the same. I pray for Miss Lynn that you'd help her eye to heal rapidly and help her through her other surgery. I pray for my Uncle Ed. You know what he is in need of this morning. I pray for him. I pray for those that are traveling. You'd give them traveling mercies. Father, I pray for those that are grieving the loss of a loved one. You, Lord, you would uh, comfort them and undergird them with, Lord, mercy. And Father, I do pray for those that are sick and those that are providentially hindered and could not be here today. God, you'd bless them the same. Now, God, you know what we stand in need of. I pray, as Brother Josh has already prayed, we'd see great revival break out even this very day. I pray for Brother Greg and Victory Baptist Church that starts revival today. Brother Sidney's down there preaching for them. Help them, Lord, do great things in that meeting this week. God, help that church. May it fan throughout this land. May we see many come to Christ. God, I pray if there's any amongst us today unsaved, today would be the day of their salvation. God, I pray for the saints of God that for a little while they just get lost in you and enjoy the goodness of God. Now, Father, help us use this unworthy vessel. God, in my own strength and in my own ability, I have nothing to offer you or to offer these people. But God, I realize that there's nothing that is impossible with thee, that God, you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And that, God, that you're able to do uh, uh, tremendous, wonderful things even in our midst today. I'm glad you're not dead, God. I'm glad you're on the throne. And I'm glad you're a force and not against us. Uh, so, Father, help us and we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to how David begins to praise the Lord. Uh, now, can I say something right here that it's nothing new for David to praise the Lord. Uh, David was real accustomed to praising the Lord. Uh, matter of fact, many of the psalms you read are psalms that David wrote uh, in praise and honor to God. Uh, I, I don't know about you, some days uh, when I'm a little low or some days when I just feel like I need a little extra kick, uh, 
I can just get in them psalms uh, and get to reading about David praising the Lord. And it causes me to want to praise the Lord a little bit. Uh, now let me help you with something. Uh, if you're not accustomed to praising the Lord, it might be a little odd for you. I highly recommend uh, you start making a steady diet uh, and make a regimen of your life of offering praise from your lips uh, and from your heart unto the Lord. Uh, he is worthy of it. Uh, uh, the very breath in your body came from God. Uh, uh, the very ability for you to get out of bed and get dressed and brush your teeth and come to church uh, came from God. Uh, the very vehicle and the very money that you have and the very house you live in, uh, all of it came from the Lord. Uh, he has blessed you abundantly uh, and He is certainly deserving of your praise this morning. Uh, can I uh, uh, just look at how David praises the Lord in these verses? Uh, can I say, first of all, he praises the Lord uh, for the Lord's greatness. Uh, look in verse 11, he says, Thine, O Lord, uh, is uh, the greatness. Uh, he didn't just say, Lord, you're great. Uh, he said, Thine is the greatness. Uh, uh, when he is talking about the greatness here, uh, he's talking far greater things than what we associate uh, when we say somebody's great. Uh, we may say somebody is a great musician, uh, or somebody is a great singer. Uh, or somebody's a great athlete, or somebody's a great Christian, or somebody's a great preacher or great teacher. When David says, Thine is the greatness, it far excels or exceeds any greatness we can ever attach to a man. Can I say, he's talking about the sovereignty of God, the supremeness of God. He says, There is none like thee. You're higher than the highest, greater than the great. Uh, he says thine is the greatness. Uh, you're the only true God. Uh, he says you are sovereign. You have uh, all power. He is referring to God uh, in his greatness. Uh, he's praising him for that. Hmm? When's the last time you praised God for being great? You say well God's not been great in my life. You're still breathing aren't you? You're not in the hospital today. We didn't offer up prayer requests for you today. Uh, uh, you was able to get here today. Uh, uh, God has been great to you. Uh, you want to see God get greater to you? You start recognizing His greatness. Mm. He's promised to bless them that praise Him. David is praising Him for His greatness. But can I say this? He also praises Him uh, for being truly God. Look what he says. He says, O oh Lord... Uh, uh, thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power. Now he's talking a lot more than just energy. He's talking a lot more than just ability. He is talking about thine is the power. He is saying that thou art truly God. Uh, he is referring to his power here uh, as him being the Almighty, uh, about his omnipotence, uh, uh, that he has all power. Uh, I know some of you kind of down today. Uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 you, you, you had a lot of money on the Chiefs last week, I guess. I don't know. Some of you are down. Uh, 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 but listen to me. Uh, uh, God is omnipotent. Uh, that means he has all power. Uh, God is omniscient. Uh, that means He's all-knowing. Uh, he knows everything. He knows uh, the number of the hairs on your head. Uh, he knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. Uh, he knows your down-sitting, your uprising. Uh, he knows your yesterdays, your todays, and your tomorrows. Uh, but Brother Jimmy not only knows that about you, uh, he knows that about Miss Judy, uh, uh, Miss Noreen, uh, uh, Mr. Herschel, uh, Mr. Clint, uh, uh, Mr. Caleb, uh, Mr. Colton, uh, Miss Mary, he knows that about everybody. Uh, he's omniscient. Uh, uh, can I say this? He's omnipresent. Uh, he's everywhere all the time. Uh, but he's omnipotent. He has all power. Uh, uh, can I help you with something? Uh, uh, the devil is powerless before God. Uh, and so are you and I. He's praising the Lord because he's truly God. There's a lot of folks worshiping a lot of things today, but there's only one worthy of worship, and He is Jehovah God. Can I say this? He says, uh, Thine is the greatness. 
and the power of being truly God. But he also worships him for his glory. He says, and the glory. He's talking about the brightness of the holiness of God. You see, we can't even fathom God. Miss Melissa, we cannot fathom the sovereign being of God. We cannot fathom the triunity of God. That He's one entity made up of three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We can't grasp that. We also can't grasp His holiness. We live in a tainted world full of sin. You on your best day, uh, uh, reading the Bible, meditating on God, talking with God, uh, uh, walk out your door, you're going to bump into something that's defiled. But in the abode of God, there is nothing defiled. And God is so holy that everything around Him is so brilliant, we couldn't even look upon it or we'd melt. Y'all remember that movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark? Remember at the end when they, when they open up the ark and that guy's face melts off? That's us in the presence of God. Uh, he said no flesh can see him and live. Uh, he's referring to his, the brilliance of his holiness when he talks about his glory. He says, thine is the glory. Uh, it's amazing how people will do something and they want to give them praise and glory. Uh Cuomo up there in New York killed all them people in the nursing home. They gave him an Emmy, Emmy and, and tell him how great he is. Uh, there's coming a day folks are going to see the glory. Uh, men are going to cry for rocks to fall on them. They don't even want to behold him in his glory. And David goes on to praise him about his gains. He says, and the victory. Hmm. Has it ever occurred to you that God's never lost anything? He's never lost a believer. He's never lost a conflict. Let me help you something. He's never even been challenged. Hmm? With God, it's always about gaining. Anybody, Brother Clint, that's ever got born again didn't lose anything but their sin. We've gained. I don't know about you, but I'm faring a whole lot better than I deserve since I got saved. God be justified throw me off into hell for things I've thought and said and done since I got saved, but I'm not going to hell uh, because I'm saved. Hallelujah. But all I've done is gained. Hey, since I got saved, I gained eternal life. I gained the fruit of the Spirit. I gained a wonderful wife. I gained three children. I've gained 50 pounds. I mean, all I've done is gained since I got saved. Hmm? Hmm. I've never lost. Because God don't lose. And let me help you with something. I don't care what the world tells you. If you're born again, you're not a loser. I've read the back of the book. We win. Because we serve a God of victory. And we have victory in Jesus. No wonder Paul said, Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can I help you with something else? And then he praises the Lord for his grandeur. He says... Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. The grandeur. That's the pomp and circumstance of it all. Y'all ever watch any of that stuff when they show all that royal crowd over there in England when they put out them long red carpets and, and they pull up in them fancy handcrafted chariots from the 17th century and that steed of horses pulling that thing uh, and they got crowns on and they got these fancy gowns on and everything around them uh, is just majestic. What do you see the court of heaven? Hmm. There's never been any grander like what we're going to see. Can you imagine when they roll out the red carpet for the bride of Christ? Can you imagine when the welcome home banner is flown? Can you imagine when we see him with the many crowns on his head? Uh, uh, when we see him in all of his majesty. i got news for you. He came as a lamb. He's coming back as the lion. But I've got news for you. We're going to the house of the Lord. He's king of all. And we're going to see him in his majesty. And that's kind of where I want to focus on. I got to thinking about His Majesty this week. 
You know what the Bible says about the majesty of God? In Psalms 93, 1, it says, The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Psalms 96, 6 says, Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Psalms 104, 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. Thou art very great, thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Psalms 145, 5, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Uh, Isaiah 2, 10, Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord, for the glory of his majesty. The writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews 1, verse 1, God, who at sundry times and divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, uh, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, uh, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, uh, by whom also he made the worlds, uh, who being in the brightness of his glory uh, and the experience image of his person uh, and upholding all things by the word of his power uh, when he had by himself purged our sins uh, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high 2 Peter 1.16 says for we've not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty that in mind for just a few minutes I want to preach on the majestic master mm, there's nobody like him mm, words can't describe him all I can say is he is majestic oh I'm glad he's my master I'm glad he's my savior I'm glad he's my lord I'm glad he's my friend I'm interested in the majestic master can I say in him there is salvation? Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Uh, why do you talk so much about him, preacher? Because there's nobody like him. Uh, because without him, our destiny is called uh, the lake of fire, uh, a place of hell. Uh, uh, but he came... Uh, and shed his blood uh, and gave his life uh, that you and I might have life. Uh, he became the Savior uh, when he died according to the Scriptures, was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures, uh, and has eternal life for anyone who put their faith and trust in him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, John fourteen six. In Him is salvation. Friend, I'm glad you came to church. Have you ever come to Jesus? Mm. Uh, say, preacher, I've been baptized. Wonderful, but have you been saved? Mm. Preacher, I've read the Bible. Wonderful. Do you know the one who wrote it? Preacher, I've given money. What a blessing. Have you given your life to Jesus? Uh, see, we're talking about Him because it's all about Him. Because without Him, we're in trouble. Huh? What a blessing to know Him. He is majestic. In Him there's salvation. I'm glad I know Him today. Huh? Hey, I'm proud to be a Baptist, but I'm more proud to be a Christian. Uh, hey, I'm proud that I've got the right Bible, but I'm more proud that I've got Him. Uh, in Him there's salvation. Can I say this? In Him there's success. There's a lot said today about being a successful Christian. You can't do it outside of Him. Hmm? Huh? I done told you, He don't lose. You know what Joshua said about success for a believer? He said this in chapter 1, verse 8. This book, talking about the Scriptures, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, thou that thou mayest observe to do all to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You see, in the master you'll find success. How do you find that? He's given us the manual for success. He pinned down this word for us to look at, to meditate upon, to apply our lives to it, and we'll be successful. Hmm? The more you're in the book, the more successful of a Christian you'll be. Why? So then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. How do you get faith? From the book. 
Who gave you the book? Him. What's the book talk about? Him. Hmm? It's all about Him. So when you pick much of Him in your life by making a steady digest from the Word of God, uh, you'll be successful. Hmm? Uh, why do you think God gave us the Bible? Because He was bored. So, well, the Bible tells us about Him, how to be saved. Yeah, it sure does. It also tells us how to live and have a happy, successful life. You can be happy, happy, happy. <clears throat> Say, preacher, Trump didn't win the election. Who cares? God's still on the throne. Amen. By the way, Trump did win the election. You're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. Hmm? Uh, I've heard this week there's two court cases coming up in them states that uh, you know to uncertify their election. Who knows? They may put him in yet. Wouldn't that be a blessing? But it don't matter. You can be happy regardless who's in the White House. You can, be, you can be happy regardless of what your bank account looks like. You can be happy uh, regardless uh, of any circumstances of life. Because my happiness is not based upon what's going on in this world. My happiness is based on Him. Hmm? It's hard to get down when you're looking up. Hmm? Uh, it's hard to look down on others when you're looking up. It's hard being negative when you're positive about Him. Okay. Hmm? I just would rather be happy. Hmm? You know, happiness is really all about who you associate yourself with. If God's blessed you with a good family, you ought to be happy. Hmm? If God's blessed you with a good church family, you ought to be happy. But you can be happy because you got Him. Hmm? Success comes from Him. Salvation is found in Him. Can I say this? In Him, there's serenity. I go to bed every night, and I'm not troubled about what happens. I'm not troubled about what happens in the morning. I'm not troubled about what happened in the, that day. I'm not troubled about if I don't wake up, what's going to happen. I'm just not troubled because I have Him. You know, he's the first one I talk to in the morning, the last one I talk to at night. He just gives you serenity. The Bible says in Psalms 29, The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. His disciples were troubled when he told them, I'm getting ready to go to Jerusalem, be betrayed. I'm going to die. The chief priests are going to have me killed. He said, I've got to go back to the Father. Boy, they got upset. They were troubled. And he left them these encouraging words. He says, peace I leave with thee. My peace I leave. Not peace like the world. My peace I leave with thee. There's nothing like the peace of God. Paul went on to uh, uh, write this. Now you've got to realize Paul was stoned three times, left for dead. He was beaten many times with 39 stripes. Paul was in prison most of his ministry. Paul said this, there is a peace that passeth understanding. You say, what do you call that? Serenity. When you have a flood of peace so powerful that even your mind rests, that comes from God. You'll find that in Him. Miss Nat and I listen to a song about it every Sunday morning. I love his song. We're going to learn it one of these days. But it talks about Peter being in prison. Chain between them two, two guards knowing the next day is going to be beheaded. He says his mind goes back to that day on the tempest when the master come walking on the water. And Peter said, if thou be him, bid me to come. He says, come on. And Peter walked on the water with him. Hmm? He said, if he spoke peace be still in them winds, if he could handle the raging waves of the sea, he can handle my little deal. Huh? Say, what's that called? That's called serenity. Hmm? Huh? Lord can help you with that. See, peace only comes in him. Can I help you something? Peace don't come in a prescription. Hmm? Uh, peace don't come in paper money. By the way, them dollars you got aren't worth a dollar. You know that, don't you? Uh, and the more they print, the worse it gets. Hmm? Peace don't come in that. Uh, peace don't come in people. I've known people get in a crowd, think they'll fit in, everything be all right, and they sit there in that crowd and they feel all alone. Hmm? Peace comes in a person, and his name is Jesus. Because he is the Prince of Peace, huh? In him, our majestic master, their salvation, their success, their serenity. But I find in him a stronghold. 
I believe it was Miss Dawn. Where are you at, Miss Dawn? Smile. I'm going to put you on camera right now. <clears throat> I believe shortly after you started coming to church, you know, back when I was really a wild preacher, I believe you was the one that asked Miss, Miss Annette, how in the world do you live with him? She said, he don't always act like that. He don't act like that at the house. Huh? Huh? I believe it was Miss Dawn asked her that. <clears throat> Preacher, how can you make some of the stands you made? Because I have a stronghold. You see, I'm not doing this under my own accord or my own authority. See, all of heaven backs up this Bible right here. Hmm? Uh, and when the Lord anoints you, you don't have to worry about anything. You got all heaven behind you. But listen to what the Bible says in Nahum chapter 1, verse number 7. The Lord is good. I say amen. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Friend, there's nothing you don't go through. The Lord don't know about it. And he's a stronghold in the day of your trouble. When your world's falling apart, you can still rest on him. Because you have a stronghold greater than anything you'll face in this world. Hmm? I'm glad I have him as my stronghold. There's been times in my life I'd have fell apart if it wasn't for him. Hmm? I've had people say, Preacher, how can you have cancer and have surgery on Monday and come to church on Wednesday? It's, it's called him. Hmm? Preacher, how can you have neck surgery and get up and teach Sunday school four days later? It's called him. Uh, I have a stronghold. See, I have an anchor steadfast and sure within the veil. And I'm attached to him. He's mine and I'm his. He's my stronghold. That's why he's majestic. Nobody in this earth can do for you what Jesus can do. Then I thought about this. In him there's satisfaction. I don't need to look for another God. I'm satisfied. He has proven him. Over the last 47 years he has proven himself this old boy. I'm going to tell you. Hmm? I'm satisfied in him. You've heard me tell the story the night I got saved. When I got, got up off the old altar, my granddaddy said, Boy, you're satisfied. Can I tell you? 47 years later, I'm still satisfied in what Jesus did that night. And the Lord is satisfaction. The psalmist said in Psalms 103, verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Here it is. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, uh, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Can I say I have no complaints? God's been good to me. Hmm? The psalmist went on to say in Psalms 107, verse 8, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men, uh, for He satisfy the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Some of you, when you was in the sinning business, you never could get satisfied. No matter how much you drank, it was never enough. No matter how much uh, uh, dope you did, it was never enough. No matter how much crowds and around, it was never enough. No matter how much entertainment you flooded your soul with, it was never enough. You was constantly searching for something till you met the Master. And He satisfied that empty place in your life. Mm. There's nobody like Him. I highly recommend Him. He's the Lord of glory. But he's also your dearest friend. Even if you don't know him, you don't know how much he cares about you. But then I thought about somebody so wonderful and so sublime and so far above us. What would he ever want from us? I mean, what can you offer the one who owns it all? Hmm? My kids got upset at us. Christian really got upset at us, you know, Christmas time. Everything they wanted to go buy for us, I'd already went and bought well, you probably get me the wrong color, so I'm just going to go get what I want when I want it. So we can't buy you anything. You already got it. Huh? Well, what do you get God? What could he possibly want from us who we stutter and stammer around and, you know, we trip and fall and, and we just make a mess of everything we put our hands on? What could he want from us? Well, can I say he wants your will? 
What separates us from the rest of creation, God gave us a will. And we have to choose whether or not we're going to follow Him. We have to choose whether or not we'll praise Him and say, well, preacher, it's just not my nature. Well, if you got born again, He gave you a new nature. And if you feed that nature enough, it's going to show out on you. He wants your will. He wants you to submit you to Him. So James sings that song, When I Lay My Isaac Down. That's what He wants you to do. He don't want your Isaac. He don't want all your money. All your, He just wants you. When you give Him you, that, that's what He wants. He owns cattle on a thousand hills. He's got a lot more than you got. He just wants your will. I thought about this. He wants your work. See, God chooses human interaction to affect spiritual outcomes. God chooses to use people. Now, it's amazing He don't need people, but He chooses to use people. He didn't choose to write it in the sky for everybody to believe. He chose you and I to tell others and live for other, before others and let others know how much He means to us. He wants your work. I know work's a four-letter word. We have to work in this life to have food on the table and stuff, and God gives you the ability to work, gives you the job to work. But He wants you to work for Him. Because all the work you do in this world, it's just temporary. It's our work for Him that really matters. And He wants you to work for Him, for His glory. He wants you to do like David's doing right here. Just tell everybody how great and glorious and majestic He is. He wants your will. He wants your work. And then He wants your worship. So many people, they give out there their best all week long. You give your best on your job, and you should. If somebody's kind enough to give you a job, you ought to give them a, you ought to give them a good day's labor for a good wage. You ought to because how you work for them reflects on your love for God. You ought to give your best to your spouse. If you've got a spouse, you ought to give your best to your children. If you've got children, you ought to give your best. At them. And we do that. We give our best to everything out there. Some of you give your best to your, your, your uh, you're the best fan. Some of you are the best, you know, uh, uh, cheerleader. Some of you, hey, when, when, when my kids played ball, they knew when I was in the stands. Sydney heard me above every coach she ever had. And so did her team. Huh? Uh, when Christian prayed for the Super Bowl, I had his number cut out in the back of my head and had it dyed blue. Remember that? Huh? Why? Because I was for him. We give our best to everything out there. How come we only give God the leftovers? How come we drag into church on Sunday morning with TV hangovers? Wore out because we had to do a whole day's worth of work on Saturday around the house. And we, we just come in, we're dragging. We've got to run to the house of God. He wants our worship, our adoration. He wants our best. Well, however much you do on your job, you ought to do better for God. However much you love your spouse and kids, you ought to love God more. No matter what you're involved in, God ought to have more of your adoration than whatever it is. Because he's done more for you than anybody ever could. He wants your will. He wants your work. He wants your worship. I wonder how much is he getting from us today? You know, he banked up heaven for you and I. What are we doing for him? He deserves our best. He's worthy of our best. Because there's nobody like him. I wonder, when was the last time you just told him thank you? When was the last time you just told him you loved him? When was the last time you showed him you loved him? I know this is Valentine's Day, and you should have showed your significant other you loved him. Huh? This is what kind of daddy I am. Sydney don't have a Valentine. She went to a camp meeting this weekend. But you know what I did? I bought her one from her daddy just so she'd have one on Valentine's Day. Huh? Why? Because I love her. That's my little girl. And heaven help you if you want to put your hands on her. Huh? But hey, Miss Annette and I, I, we spent Friday together and had a big Valentine's Day. I bought her a box of chocolates I knew she didn't like, so I knew who'd get them. <laughs> hey, that's smart thinking. Uh, 
say, why? We do that to show our love. Now, sad, some of you, that's the only time you show your spouse or your significant other your loves on Valentine's Day. You show them every day. But there's one day dedicated where we show. Can I help you something? There's one day a week dedicated where we show him that we love him. We ought to show him every day that we love him. But when we come to the house of God, we ought to show out that we love him because he first loved us. I wonder, when was the last time he was majestic in your heart and your life and others could see it? Because, friend, if they're not seeing it, we're not being the light of the world. Today would be a good day for you to show out your love to him. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Some are already coming. You need to come. You come. If you're here today and not saved, why don't you come? We'll introduce the Lord to you. There's nothing like Him. You will not be sorry, friend, that you met the Master. I wonder today, will you come? Folks are coming. Why they're coming, let's pray. Father, we love you. We bless your holy name. Lord, you are great. You are the victor. You have all power. You have all glory. And you are majestic, Lord. Lord, words fail us to describe what you really mean to us. God, we sure do want folks to know we love you. And Father, have your way in this invitation now. I pray if there's somebody here not saved, you deal with them. God, they'd come, get born again. I pray for somebody that might be out of the will of God. Today, they'd get in the will of God. I pray for somebody that, Lord, just is hurting. Today, they'd find help in the Master. God, I pray for any other need. It'd be met in thee, and I pray revival would break out. We just show folks how much we love Jesus. Have your will and way in this invitation. Bless these in the altar. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.